All right. You, you see, not, that, the, not you, that there would be any evidence if you didn't. Look, look. Do you see the button right there? You, you. Yeah, I see it. Okay, damn it. Make it Ver- verified recording. Okay, we are recording. Damn it. Okay, guys. All right. As you know, guys, we're recording. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Is It Riding? Today was Zach Choice, and prepare for this joyous occasion because it is Zach's choice. I got a bottle. I'm ready. Mm. A bottle I just got, of Novocaine? No. I got I got a bottle of Dr Pepper cream soda. I, I got a <laughs> bottle of margarita. So um, and a cup of cherry cola. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm ready for this. Um, because the last time I last time you know last few times I needed this alcohol. is nowhere near that level. It, I will say this was an interesting choice. Yeah, it was. Yes. Like. This is nowhere near Tideland. This is definitely not Tideland. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I needed that, though. It was Saturday. Well. Or even El Super Bisto. It's not even on those kind of. Well, El Super Bisto was yeah, El Super Bisto was entertaining. <laughs> no, I'm just saying it's not that kind of thing. Right. Or right. Ultraviolet, which I watched. <laughs> well, why right, did you do right that? we made you watch ultraviolet i yes. forgot about that hey you <laughs> made it blade so what because <laughs> um, i pitched it <laughs> yeah i know right yeah all right all right but all right guys so we're here to, if you don't know we're doing nova king which stars steve martin helen bar carter and um do you want to redo that one? <laughs> yeah, I, I messed her name up did i, I know. you got like the last name no, 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 half of it. <laughs> yes, the easiest that? of the three names he got right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I couldn't get the middle name. I'm sorry. Helena Bonham Carter Carter and Bonham. Laura Dern. And Laura Dern. I know Laura Dern in it. So yeah, it's and um, great cast. Yeah, great cast. Yeah. yeah, yeah, good cast. I I didn't expect this, but anyway, um, it's Zach and, Smith and and fucking throw in. Keep David and Kevin Bacon in there. Yes! As well. Best part of the movie. Oh, we'll best part of the movie. We'll get back to that in a minute. So weird. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We'll get to that in a minute. I, uh, well, we'll get to it. We'll get I'm to sure it. we'll get to it. We're sure, we're sure. Um, I, I found this movie years ago and it was a total curveball. I'm like, what? <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and go with our first impressions. So, seeing that this is Zach's film that he picks, he gets to go say it last. All right. So, um, do y'all want me to go first? Yeah, you can go first. Mm-hmm. All right. I, let me explain. Well, so, when Zach picked this choice, I first saw the cover and I was like, I know why you picked this. It's teeth. It has everything to do with teeth. It's <laughs> teeth. It's fucking teeth. Of course you picked this, Zach. I watched the first thing and I was like, oh, I know why you picked this. Also, I'm not going to lie, I had, I literally made some mixed drinks and I drunk about, I was into like five margaritas. Yeah, that happened. And I drunk, a, I drunk some stuff. Yeah, I was drinking. So what? I watched this movie drunk. And I'm not going to lie, even when I was drunk, I did enjoy some of the parts getting past it. I did like the mystery of it. Um, you know, I, what, what made, I think, more so, I could see why it was rotten because you know, you know, you got the. I think around this time the fugitive was out, so it was oddly, com- oddly compared. No, this to- was this was like ten years after the fugitive. What the <laughs> fuck are you on? No, yeah. this is ten years after the fugitive. Yeah, this yeah. is like two thousand one. Okay, well, I mean, I compare it to the fugitive. You know, I, I always compare it to the future. I know this is way beyond it, but yeah, it's got elements of it. They got elements of the fugitive in it, and I was like, this really feels like a fugitive clone. And Zach get mad at me. Zach, I'm not making fun of it. I'm just telling you, this is what no, I. It, no, that just didn't make any sense. No, I'm saying it. <laughs> no, I'm saying I can see why people, why critics wouldn't like it because it's like, oh yeah, this is just you know a fugitive clone. You know, I mean. I, I'd say it's it's more a mix of the fugitive and the player. There we go. I'll give you that. I was thinking like Cohen Brothers. You got a little bit of like Fargo in there. Mm. I thought like the well, small well, time well, crime, you know. Well, well oh, brother, we're out there. I'm surprised you guys haven't mentioned the most obvious comparison being the whole nine yards. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
which came I, out a year before, but they were. Yeah, I mean, all of these time. movies well, are like in the wake of like the Coen Brothers and Guy Ritchie and well, Tarantino. The thing is, yeah. I never saw the whole nine yards. I only ever saw the whole ten yards. Oh, shit. <laughs> how did you follow it? <laughs> how did you know what was going on? I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I watched the whole nine yards. Oh, this is now I understand why you said the whole nine yards because of the teeth pulling and the dentistry. I, I can understand that. But if all in all, I'm not gonna lie, I did enjoy this film. I really did enjoy it. I enjoyed the mystery. Um I didn't expect what I expect to happen at the end. Um I'm not gonna lie, as a teenager, I did have a crush on Helen. I yep, I had a crush on him. She was pretty. She was, I had a crush on him, so I'm not gonna lie to you. And I just remind me how hot she was back then. So I did like the film and I did enjoy the mystery and I did enjoy the ending. There were some parts where I was like, what the fuck? But, yeah, I'll get to that in a minute, but yeah, enjoyable movie. Who's next? Besides I'll that. go next. Um, so I had straight up never heard about this movie before. <laughs> it's like, it's like, I, it's like my mom usually asks, uh, it's like whenever I bring up that I'm doing the show, she asks what movie I watched and it's like, yeah, I watched uh, Novocaine. It was like a like a like a two thousand one sort of like noir ish movie starring Steve Martin. She's like, I've never heard about heard of that movie in my life, <laughs> and, <laughs> with good reason probably. But yeah, it was this movie was. I'm gonna be honest. It's like the first third of this movie is like boring, but it's like purposefully boring. <laughs> The, the first third of this movie like 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 it, it narratively has a reason to be boring but at the same time it's just boring right so it's a fine line to really tread there right <laughs> but once you get past the boring stuff it gets better so yeah yeah it's like it's like it's it's a bold move to make your movie purposefully boring for the first third <laughs> i'll say that <laughs> <laughs> but uh i mean pr- i mean honestly the movie's got some pretty generic noir ish plot points so it's like it's 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 actually fairly cookie cutter surprisingly and it's like honestly if you want like a modern noir watch go watch like the player over this or or like or chinatown something like something along those lines or hell just just go watch Sunset Boulevard, honestly. <laughs> True. <laughs> you can't go wrong with Sunset Boulevard. Yeah, you can't go wrong. Yeah. All right. Uh, ah. well, I also had never heard of this movie. Uh, it, it was one of those movies that I guess just got kind of lost in the shuffle. I I didn't hate it. Uh, yeah, th- there were parts that were good. Like yeah, like Eric was saying, the beginning is really slow, and uh, purposefully so. And once it does pick in, uh, kick into gear, it kind of rushes through things a little bit too quickly. Uh, yeah, I thought I thought it was decent though. I I never really bought Steve Martin as the lead though. That was one of my biggest complaints. Like I just I just didn't yeah I just didn't buy his character. Oh, okay, I, I'm I'm the same way. I didn't buy it. Yeah. All right, Zach. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, and just 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 on that, I, I agree. I kept waiting for him to do something that he just never does. Like mm-hmm. just it's like it's like he's he's like so like he's like in neutral the entire movie and you expect exactly. him to go one of two ways and he never does. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. It's just it, it just feels like another Steve Martin performance in this weird movie. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. seems the one that's lost, the most one lost in this movie. Yeah, everybody else kind of seems to like be picking a character that they're playing. Like everybody is very distinctive, except for Steve Martin. He's just Steve Martin. Also, Scott King is in this. Scott Con, yeah. Scott Con. Scott Con. <laughs> Entourage is Scott Con. <laughs> My bad. Japan. I get the name. I get the name. In the end. I'm sorry. I'm reading the name wrong. I'm sorry. I know it's James Con's son. James Con's son. Yeah. He's Hollywood royalty. Yeah, I know. And it's funny. His dad was in Hawaii Five O, and now he's doing his murder murder mystery film. <laughs> So yeah, and it, and it's and it's funny because he's doing he did Hawaii Five O. His son's doing Hawaii Five O. Interesting. All right, Zach. 
honestly, I don't really have that much to say about like this other than what I like about this movie is the weird edges that come out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Like you'll be watching it kind of bored or kind of just, okay, in neutral. And then you'll be like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that. Like it has a lot of, it has a lot of weird punches to it. And honestly, that's, that's what made me kind of really enjoy it. Cause I mean, I disagree with, the, I, I think this, Steve Martin was like that for a reason because I think if he would have been more of a character that wouldn't have worked as well. well maybe not quite as like out there as the other characters because everyone else is like very ridiculous mm-hmm. yeah but I I don't I just I, maybe it was just like the performance that he was giving like it just I didn't feel like he worked. Yeah. See, the thing about Steve Martin, I always think of him as, like, he can be serious, but I always think of him in the same vein as Leslie Neeson. Nielsen? Damn it, the Nielsen. Neeson, 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 Leslie. Liam Neeson? Liam Neeson. Not Liam Neeson. <laughs> Leslie. Leslie Nielsen. Nelson Nielsen. <laughs> I always put him in the same vein because he was a serious actor, but he turned into a comedic actor. But he has serious actor wrote, so I'm not saying Steve He, he kind of did the opposite, though. Yeah, I mean, Steve Martin's been a comic forever. Yeah, and then he yeah. started doing more dramatic stuff around this time. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and it just... It... And then he made Cheaper by the Dozen. <laughs> yeah, I did he made that. <laughs> Me did too. he make it? <laughs> I think he was still on autopilot. <laughs> yeah, he probably was on, he's probably still doing, on, doing drugs from the 70s. Um, like, he got a hold of the click remote, started when he... He hit the button when he started this movie and then went all the way till Cheaper by the Dozen too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much. All right. Yeah. All right, guys. How so is the what is it? It goes okay. Best line from this film. Best line from Don't we do this in reverse usually? Yeah, we do best scene first. Okay, my bad. Best scene. Sorry. <laughs> best scene. Sorry. Um, best scene first. Um, best thing. I damn it, I'm gonna pick it. Damn it, I don't give a fuck what y'all think. It, it has to be with Keith Mar- Keith David just popping up, just talking like, "Hey, hey, you look at this first right? I just like, damn it. and then Kevin Bacon adding <laughs> the effect with it. Just like, you, you see, you see this guy and it's like, what the hell? That got me into it because I, I loved it because I was like, you do know this is a crime scene and. He's a doctor, and you don't know he's not famous or nothing, but he just a, he just a dentist, and you're talking to him like he's a normal fucking human being, and that's what makes it funny because Keith David is like you expect Keith David to be serious, but he's actually jokingly and just having fun with him, like hey, you know, it's the way you do things, you know. It's like it's it's just like. Hey, it's a, it's just an episode of Castle inside of uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. In, inside of this noir. Yeah. But at the I, same time, you do also kind of see like Keith David kind of trying to trip Steve Martin up a little bit to like give up too much more information. Right, yeah. right, right. And I, and I like that, but it's kind of just... Columbo it. Right, right. But yeah, that's my favorite scene. I love Why that. isn't there a Columbo movie? <laughs> right, mm. like Mark Ruffalo is right there. What's going on? <laughs> No, I actually agree with that 100%. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Eric? Yeah, so I would say probably my favorite scene is actually probably... It's it's actually going to be the scene that pretty much immediately precedes that, where it's him in the hotel room. He's like He's trying to just end it with Helena bon- Bonham Carter's character, and it's just the brother in the bed... <laughs> <laughs> and uh and uh you know it's like it ends with the altercation of him stabbing him in the hand with the scissors and mm-hmm. then just then just like what are you gonna oh, do man. stab me ah you stabbed me <laughs> and like well it's like well, what are you gonna do now and then he opens the scissors like ha! <laughs> it's just like it's just like it's like that that's like one of the things is like yeah you you expect a, th- there to be a moment where this character breaks but he just never does <laughs> right yeah right Scott. Uh, well, you picked the best scene in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> no? yeah. But I'm I'm gonna go with that that like one shot of uh, Steve Martin going from like patient to patient early on in the movie, where like there's the the wife holding the toupee on the guy, 
I thought that was like a really well done shot. Right. Okay. All right. Zach. Okay, this is going to end up being weird later, but I actually am going to say uh, the 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 scene when he's on the roof running. Honestly, I like that <laughs> I, whole I, sequence. I, 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 yeah, I, I can see sure, that. Like, there's, there's a part of it I don't like. Right. Yeah. But the, the majority of that just, like, it it's part of what I'm like, okay, I get what this movie is going for entirely now, where it's like, this is a, a pure comedy of errors with no basis in any reality. <laughs> right. Because, yeah, like, it, it, went, it went on for too long for it to be, like, an immediate failure. But, like, if this was, like, a standard noir, he would have, like, actually escaped. So it's, like, it's so, like, again, it's, like, this weird point in the middle. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, it's, like, once again, inter- interesting way to take the movie to, you know, <laughs> just sort of not really ride the line between being a noir and parodying it, parodying a noir. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, I like, I, that's, I think that's part of what I like about this movie is that it is, it is very mysterious the entire yeah. way through. What are you doing? Is like 90% of what I'm thinking. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, I guess we're going to go with this line. I guess I got to go first. Um, the problem is that the problem is um, I have a problem. With, um, I never had a late pay. I never um, I had a problem. With, I always got all my appointments in line, but this patient get irked me the most with um, the late. You know, the late. I think the line is she came in late. I don't like it. That kind of line kind of got to me because I was like, okay, this is you trying to, Steve Martin. I can understand it. He's going to that. It sort of feels like the old 90s type of thing. Like, I hate, you know, I hate doing this or I hate doing that. I like that line because it makes you, it gives you like, okay, I know it's supposed to be boring, but it gives you that feel of what it was in the back, back in the day. And I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. I like that. So that line kind of dropped me in. Again, 2001. I understand. But it, <laughs> I understand, but it gives you that noir, deep yeah. noir from the old, old top, black and white films. That's what I mean. Yeah. It gives you that noir tales, and I like that. Right. Yeah. No. That that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it's just like in in general, I wasn't a big fan of the narration in this movie, but it's just like just just because. I mean, yeah, it is it is performed flat, but that's just how noir narration usually is. But it's just like it's like most of the, most of the narration was not needed. <laughs> yeah. uh, but that 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 one is actually a decent uh, character building moment, I guess. Uh, my favorite line is Kevin Bacon line. Uh, it's it's a. Uh, when it's it's when after he uh, escapes from the arraignment, and he's like, "Yeah, but the audience doesn't know that." <laughs> it's just like just like this, this, just the whole conversation. A complete pre Deadpool Deadpool fourth wall break that you'd never see anywhere. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it, that's like it's, it's like I was just, just watching. And I'm like, that is that is way too smart a moment for this movie <laughs> yeah kevin bacon it's, it's, like it, but it's could so, have turned to the camera and winked no. and it's <laughs> like i'm like i'm like that's smart also did does kevin bacon know that he helped him escape in that moment <laughs> i actually i actually believe that he f- was full aware that he helped him escape there ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah old kevin maybe bacon. Like that's a lot of this movie is a question mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, once again, uh, somebody took mine. Eric, you took my answer. <laughs> <laughs> so my uh, my backup is uh, I think it was the guy in the motel, or I can't remember who it was exactly. But he was like, "There's a fight on pay per view tonight. Got pay per view at home? No, didn't think so." Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the liquor store owner. The liquor store. The yeah, liquor store that's right. Yeah. All right. Eric, you mentioned you didn't like the narration. I like it because it's perfectly flat. And I think it has to do a lot with the fact how much I love old noir movies. 
like that's a genre I watch a lot of. Right. Um, right. And my my favorite line is honestly the end where he's talking about the pulling of the teeth. You're like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> I felt a little better, a little less trapped, a little more free. And you're just like, <laughs> he's adding all this philosophical importance onto this. And you're just like, what the hell is going on? But but also at the same time, it's like, the, the, the one thing that really irks me about that scene is because the only way that that at any point would make sense would be if the recording didn't have audio. But we clearly hear... There's audio in the recording, so they could clearly hear that that's not Steve Martin. That's his right. brother. <laughs> I mean, a lot about the ending doesn't really add it's like, up. It's like, like he so writes there, a book about everything. Oh yeah, no, his brother's name. There's there's no reason for him to pull his teeth and fake his death. They they got her admitting to the crime. Right. <laughs> there's. Well, like, he, uh, oh, wait, he didn't know. Yeah, but at, at yeah, the he end, didn't. He didn't know that. Yes. So he would have done that anyway, and maybe found out years later. Why the hell did I do this? <laughs> <laughs> so, that should have been the ending scene. Yeah, <laughs> but but like, it's, it's like I, the, also the other question is, it's like how did? Is because I'm fairly certain that the dentures he has is the dentures that you know his his fiance had a made of his own teeth. But then how did he get that? Because they went missing. <laughs> I don't know if they were necessary. Cause he said that he went to a dentist to like fix her. Yeah. No, so he he's, can, yeah. yeah. He, he, went, to, he went to the dentist to, also, to, to fix a root canal. Yeah. But yeah. she brought out the dentures at the end there. Like the whole point was she brought the dentures to frame him. Mm-hmm. Right. So. All right. This it's is what I'm talking weird. about. It was, like, a little, it was a... a little too rushed at the end. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a reason for that. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, I guess we'll we're going. Into. All right. I guess we're going with worst scene. All right. Worst scene for me is when he gets hit over the head, and we have the dream sequence of the ending. There. That that goes back to the rush, and I understand. Like, oh yeah. Then it comes back. I understand. It comes in relation to the end. But it was more so, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know this is 2001, but I was having flashback of the cat in the hat when he got popped in the head and he was like. <laughs> is this when he was in the trunk and he like sees her pregnant? Yeah, I think. Like he gets yeah. the flash to yeah, her yeah. pregnant. Well, the th- that's the thing. It's like, that's actually a reference to earlier in the movie when she's, he's talking about the French movie. Yeah. Right, right. Like the first scene, it's a reference to. That was yeah. like a what the fuck moment for me. But like, then like, it also actually happens. Yeah. <laughs> Look. That, that was, and I understand, I understand the importance. Like, oh, yeah, it actually happened. But at the moment, I'm still like, what the fuck? I, I don't think we needed that. Did we really need that? I mean, did we? <laughs> you did know? we not need it? No, we didn't need it. <laughs> did it, did it. Did it improve the story? Did it help the mystery? Did it solve the mysteries that? No, it didn't do nothing. It was a it was a scene that wasn't needed. I mean, basically, you're just doing the scene twice. So I didn't like it because it felt like you were doubling up the scene, and it was just you know you could have put something in there to make the mystery a little bit more interesting. But that felt like not needed. It, it didn't feel needed. It just felt like it was a what the fuck moment. And I'm like, okay, cool. I would time wasted. So I mean, yeah, all right, cool. That I didn't like it. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, yeah, my my worst scene is the call with the pharmacist <laughs> because <laughs> if the, the pharmacist was calling to you know conf, you know confer about the prescription and then raised concerns about the number after he already rung her up and let her go. The, it's mind-boggling. Yeah. <laughs> like, and then he starts yelling is, at Steve Martin. <laughs> like, clearly, the reason he was calling was about the number. But all Steve Martin did was verify the drug, not the pill count. Right. 
Talk about burying the lead. Like, yeah. On, man. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I was, I was sitting there saying like, I think the implication is supposed to be he's crooked, but they didn't pull it off. No, because he doesn't show up at any other point in the movie. And... No, but I mean, like, I think the, I think the implication yeah. was he's just calling as a courtesy. He's crooked, but he's just... right. But it didn't. Yeah, like he's didn't assuming read. that uh, that Steve Martin's also crooked, and that like you're just overstepping with the fifty. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my worst scene was at towards the end when it's just uh, Laura Dern and uh, Harlan Elias Cotius is that I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, he and they're just like dropping exposition. It's just them basically like laying out what happened, and it's just like yeah, we get it. I think we uh, we kind of get like where like they laid all the tracks down that we got what was going on, and they just still had to say it. I mean, I I got it once Harlan was in the dental office when the brother showed up. I'm yeah. like, oh, they set it up together. Okay. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> All right. Zach, tear it apart. All right. Like, it, it's hard because I actually have three of them, even though this is my film. <laughs> right. <laughs> but... But it's like, it, Eric, think about with you with Rat Race, you've thought about this more than once. Right. <laughs> Where I still think the, the, it's the I love your ass and pinch it part in the yeah. chase sequence I like, because that's just, it's, I'm I, like, that's the thing. I have a hard time because the best and worst part, worst parts of this movie coalesce. <laughs> in the, like the, the one thing that I will say to, it's like it's like a nice juxtaposition of it's like oh this is the kind of hotel that she's staying at the kind yeah. of motel she's staying at this, this is, is a, this is a shithole <laughs> yeah uh the and other... i also just love how much it just it just lingers on that as well it's just like it's once again, it's well. He it's just perfect. stands it's, there for a good ten seconds. He really does. It's like, he just I, sort of I, I enjoy that part of the chase because it is purposefully awkward. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like he could have picked a different room to drop down in. Yeah. Uh, the other part, uh, the other one was uh, the just the you can't keep doing this with your brother part. Yeah, that was a bit much. Yeah, that was. That was just them trying to throw in a little Chinatown. Right. Yes. Which, yeah, I mean, it, there was, it some, adds there up was to enough, nothing. there was enough influence here already. Yeah. It was unnecessary. It was. Yeah, like, it, ju- it just adds up to nothing. Uh, like, I, I assume it's supposed to be there not only for, it's supposed to be there for the Jack Nicholson reference. Because the whole role here, if you do not know, is a reference to Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and oh, yeah, that's why Nicholson he... is in the original Little Shop of Horrors. Right. So <laughs> it's then... actually a double reference, but it's weird. <laughs> yeah, and also it's funny that Steve Martin was the dentist in the remake of Little Shop of Horrors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember that, Zach. <laughs> All right, a, I mean that's a great movie. It is a good movie. I, I'm I'm not I'm not saying Little Shop remake. Both movies are good. I'm not saying nothing wrong. No. Yeah, I love the Little Shop of Horrors. I hate it. I don't and they're remaking it again. Why? I don't know. Aren't aren't Why they the remaking it with the original ending? <laughs> Wait, you want know, to see no. more killing everybody? <laughs> okay, would it matter? Like, I don't think most people who have seen the if you've seen the original, you're like, it's already amazing they fleshed out as much as they did. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It was, it was interesting. Seymour Origins. Mm-hmm. Seymour Origins. <laughs> yeah, I want to rate it R, Little Shop of Horrors. That's really what I want to see. I want to see blood. Um, well, I mean, the original would have been rated R at the time. Not true, but we need more. I want, <laughs> I want actual limbs. Yeah, we need heads getting ripped off. Yeah, I want... Yeah. I won't. Me and James Gunn versus God damn it. 
<laughs> yes, definitely, definitely. I would see that. Honestly, I, I could imagine he probably really loves that movie. He probably will. Wow. James Gunn, please direct for, me. For reference, for reference, we're recording this the day the – uh, it's like it's like uh, like around when the DC fandom started, and the little featurette of James Gunn for the uh, in the new Suicide Squad movie just released. Oh, uh, well, yeah, that is true, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so that that that's that's part of the reason why James Gunn is definitely on at least on the top of my mind. Yeah, the mm-hmm. everybody's mind. All right, well, worst line. Um, I don't know. I'm always thinking about Slither, but that's just. <laughs> <laughs> Worst line, do you got a handkerchief? Ugh. Yeah. Why would, why the fuck would a cop in this why why first of all, this is a man convicted for murder and you're trying to ask him for a handkerchief. Why in the <laughs> world why in the fuck do you think this man will give you a handkerchief? No. Uh, I mean I, I do wanna correct your phrasing there. He at that point he was not convicted of murder. Well, yeah, I'm a, my bad, my bad. Yeah, and I mean, when, when you get a nosebleed immediately, like you're not really thinking about who's next to you. True, true, but that just unless like, you're thinking about, hey, I'm gonna bleed evidence all over my prisoner. Right, right, right. <laughs> that too. It's just, it's just. It, why, why would I? Why would you do it? I mean, it's just. It just seems dumb to me so the, the it was just like another weird quirk to throw in it doesn't really amount to anything either yeah and it's i was just, like it's just a fun little character moment for that I, guy. I i do think that it off the bat establishes how incompetent that off that particular officer is right, right. yeah but like when they end up letting basically the whole plot slip <laughs> yeah <Right. laughs> But he wasn't that incompetent. I mean, he at least handcuffed him. The only problem, the only he broken... handcuffed him to a broken bench. <laughs> he literally pops yeah. the arm off of the bench what? three seconds after he walks away. Yeah, like, yeah, no, okay, he that is, is true. He's exactly that incompetent. Right. right. <laughs> I, I, think, I think it's more so the incompetent character. That just started it, and I was like, when I heard you got a handkerchief, it's like, oh, Lord. It's going to be yeah. the incompetent cop. Oh, this is the same trope. Oh, shit. Oh come on! Think of something original. But that's... well, they made both the they made both him and the desk person incompetent though. They didn't. Yeah. They yeah. did stop. Yeah, d- yeah. It just like just think of do something new. Damn it! That's what I want. I want something new. Somebody just at least let him be inventive. Yeah, I wanted a new concept in two thousand one. That's reasonable. Oh, shut up, Zach. <laughs> yeah, no, that was that was not the time to ask for new concepts. <sighs> that's true. All right. Well, at least I wanted something. I need it. I need something. But that, I, but that, I needed something. Ah, right, yeah. You might as well look. Go ahead and get look, the sign if up. if two thousand, huh? I said you might as well get the sign up because I almost if... called you Zach. <laughs> <laughs> the if two thousand and one was open to new concepts, we would have maximum pain. <laughs> this Point. is true. This is true. This is true. This, this, uh, it's it's unfortunate that that cartoon was never made. True. I wanted more blood and blood maximum overdrive, but you know, I didn't get it. You have no idea what he's talking about. Hell no, I have no idea what he's talking about. Sky, I actually do. <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> Eric, what's your what is your worst line? Uh, there, there is, there is a lot. There's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot that's just bad. A lot of what comes out of Leland's mouth is uh, pretty bad. <laughs> uh, if I had, if I just had to choose one, it's like you're not you're not stepping out of the of that nice fiance of yours, are you? Because it's just like <laughs> it's like could you be more ob- obviously? <laughs> A part of this. <laughs> it's like Amber, no. It's no. like there's there's no reason for him to remotely like like there character wise, there's no reason for him to suspect that if he doesn't already know that that was the point. <laughs> so it's just like 
I'm like, just like, it's infuriating how how bad he was and how just like Steve Martin just could not catch on. <laughs> oh, crap, man. That was pretty bad. Look, if Steve Martin could have caught on, there wouldn't have been a movie. Mm. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of times he could easily get out of what's happening. Right. No, like, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Sorry, this this lady, like, seduced me and stole all my drugs. Hugs. Right. And a movie. Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not illegal to cheat on your fiance. It just it's not good. <laughs> but it, it, like like the, the thing is is that all right. All right, going off a bit of a tangent here. Lord Dern's the whole the whole plot leans on the fact that Steve Martin wouldn't just turn her in. Right. <laughs> For for stealing her drug for stealing the drugs, that was. It's like murder aside, that was not part of the plan. If, also, like, if he just she, turned her in, it's like what would what would she have done? <laughs> she's she's also engaged to him, right? Yeah, yeah. So just, I thought they were engaged. Yeah, so yeah. just like marry him. Yeah, no, that, and that, then that, kill that. him. <laughs> No, that's what? actually brought up in the end, though. That is yeah. brought up in the end. Exactly. Well. Like, yeah, yeah. Why didn't she just marry him? Yeah. And then kill and him. Then, and then her response was, let's go do some stuff in the chair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Wait. like, it's like, why do we have this convoluted plot? You could have just married him. Yeah. Shut up. You only had to kill now. one person. Only one person had to die. Steve Martin. <laughs> That's just, you know what? Can I change my answer to let's do some stuff in the chair? <laughs> <laughs> I mean that that I was paraphrasing. That's that's not actually, actually the line, but it's close enough. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Cause I want to change it. That was dumb. Yeah, it was, was pretty dumb. Yo, really, let's go do some stuff in the chair. Like, what the well, fuck? again, that's also a callback. Yeah, no, it is a callback. Yeah, like that's yeah. the thing. A lot of the this movie's lines are bizarre, bookended callbacks. And it's like, <laughs> no, hey, it's like said- that. That is this this movie, and I apologize for this pun. Is loaded with Chekhov's guns. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I I kind of love that. I yes. feel like it's trying to do that on purpose. It mm. is one hundred percent doing it on purpose. That that that's like. That's like one of the like the most infuriating parts of this movie is that it's like equal parts playing and playing on noir tropes. Right. And it's like I'm like just go just go one inch in either direction, please. I <laughs> I <laughs> my worst line came early on cuz it kind of to me gave away what was happening or at least yeah. a little oh, bit shit. uh it was um when hit when harlan and steve martin are in the bar and uh he's like to brothers one a success and one a loser and it's like okay you're the yeah, brother's involved was... <laughs> yeah. harlan's involved he's yeah. he's he goes away basically for like the next yeah. 25 minutes and he's like oh he's and then the next time you see him he's in the dentist's office looking at laura dern yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. And Spoilers: it, they they did it together. Yeah, they did. I don't know if we've, don't know if we've said that out. <laughs> I, we did. We did. We did. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Wait, that... is that a spoiler? <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> that's, no. That's, that's the best part. Of, that's what I love. It's like, what's a spoiler in this film? Right. right. It's like, it's like you know, the brother had something to do with it from that uh, from from like pretty much immediately but how <laughs> and, dumb is he is your <laughs> yeah right. and then like and then like like from the second that you see how obsessive laura dern's character is she's like oh she's also involved <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, laura dern i admit laura dern plays like Good, crazy one. Oh, she was funny. Yeah, she's oh, great. She, she is awesome. I will admit that. When she's doing the, the, the karate or whatever it is. Like, yeah! I was like, oh, shit. I don't want to mess yeah, with that, you. Yeah, that, 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 by the way, my backup best line is, oh, thank you. You should stand up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you already are. Because <laughs> the first time I saw that guy, I'm like, 
man, that dude's short. <laughs> I like, I, I felt like I was watching the 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 video of the dude in the bagel shop. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> Oh, and you were worried that the James Gunn thing would date this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, just, you know, just reference year old viral videos. That's fine. <laughs> All right, Zach. All right. Honestly, it's the worst, li- worst line to me, actually, is the 730 thing. Yeah. I no. feel uh, like yeah. that could have been done better. Like, I feel like Helena Bottom Carter's character could have been put a lot more stank on that, and it would have been better. But then she, like, her accent was slipping a lot. In yeah, it was. It was. It was bad. It yeah. was bad. It was so bad. Yeah, I feel like if she put any more stank on it, it would have just been full on British. British. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm... honestly, would that have really been out of character? If she turned out to be British, like I would have bought into it. I would have bought totally into fine it. With that. Exactly. <laughs> like, I felt, and I'm not, and I'm not trying to say being mean on it. I'm not trying to say crazy, but did you get like she just basically was playing Mara Singer? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. She was in total Marla Singer mode. Yeah, yeah. I'm not <laughs> trying to say that. Yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to be mean or nothing, but I'm like, basically, this is just Marla Singer. I was like, I'm yeah, not. she should have just been British. Then Scott Conn could have been British. <laughs> True. Been great. True. True. Honestly, there's really no reason for her character to be American. <laughs> there's no, no, no. That is. True. I do want to mention that uh, apparently Khan and Martin did not get along, so the animosity there is real, <laughs> <laughs> like a hundred percent. I can see that. Yeah. Weren't they? Was, was Steve Martin on Entourage too? I feel like he was on Entourage for an episode. Everyone was on Entourage, weren't they? Martin Scorsese was. Exactly. Exactly. Everybody. (laughs) (laughs) You just proved the point. Yes. All right. All right. right, So, guys, go ahead and answer the question. Is it right? Come on. Oh, well, we got to ask you first because you're first in the rotation. All right. (laughs) David MacGyver Pool, is this (laughs) wrong? (laughs) <laughs> oh, it's it's so close, isn't it? It's very you, close. You, <laughs> yeah, you're you're oh, it's, you're teetering on the edge. I want to. I'm putting that at fifty nine. Fifty nine. It's rotten, but by like one point. There's the the, the speed up ending really teeters to it. Yeah. It's, it's 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 good. I'm not saying it's bad. I yeah. like it. I want to love this film. I want to make it. It's not 38. It's 38 and Rat Tomatoes. Yeah, 38 is the, the – honestly, that's the contentious part for me of why I even yeah, put it. Yeah, I would not put it at a 38. We have right. watched things lower than 38. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say this is really a 59, and it's still rotten, but by hair. If they were to fix – if they were to fix up the speed up of the ending, yeah, I, I would go wholeheartedly like 65. 65 fresh. It would be a good film, but if it's really at 59, it's like a hard, not a hard 59, but like a unbalanced 59. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah, I'm not trying to say it's bad. I can't say it's bad, but there's so much stuff that can make it worse. So I got to keep it in that yin and yang situation. All right. Eric! Yeah. Osmaker, is it rotten? Yeah, I'm also teetering on the edge here. I, <laughs> I, cause, like, all right. If you know the if this movie, you know, committed to the noir bit and didn't have a quote unquote happy ending, this movie would probably be an easy seventy. But it's like it's honestly, this movie. It's like it. It's like it's so like like I said. It's. It's so busy teetering on the edge. I can't really give it anything other than a sixty. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah, I, and I understand. Like it's, it's it's bizarre. It's a bizarre it's film. Bizarre. It is. It's good and bad at the same time. It's committed to being good and bad. At the same yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's on. It's I got. You gotta applaud it. Yeah, you gotta like, it. It's, it's not on the room. I wouldn't put it on the same level as room because it's not. 
So it commits no. the well, it's not incompetent. No, yeah. No, no, no. no. The, no, this movie is entirely competent, and you're not like wondering the whole time, is this on purpose? You're like, this is on purpose, but what's the it's like, purpose? Yeah. Every, every every strange thing about this movie is a hundred percent intentional, mm-hmm. and it's like infuriating. And actually, I will say probably the only thing that might not be intentional is probably the ending. Right. It's like because it's like it's like. That was that was so clearly a studio note, <laughs> right? right. <laughs> that no. And, uh, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to do it. Yeah, That's, it's it's hard to. It's, to just... it's like I said. If it, if it if it, it's like I can get over the boring beginning because it's purposeful. It has its it has its reasons for being like that. Mm-hmm. But I can't excuse that ending. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that ending. Yeah. I gotta. I, I, my my problem is. Pick a side, and you're not mm. picking a side. It's hurting me. Uh, but would it be interesting if it did? Yeah, it would. And it would have got a, it would have got up a sixty five. But it's teeter tottering in my face. I'm All sorry. Right. Right. Scott, <laughs> is it rotten? Yes, it is. Also, <laughs> I also think it is rotten. Uh, I I think I'm a little bit less forgiving than you guys on this one. I, I'm gonna give it like a fifty. It's okay. like a perfect like middle of the road movie for me. Like I'll probably forget I watched it in like a year right. <laughs> if it wasn't for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll do it when we do a twenty year reunion. That's okay. Right. Reunion. We're gonna watch them all over again. All the like, like twenty year reunion. We're all gonna be in the old folks home and we're like, yeah, we're here. <laughs> Doing 20th episode. Oh, fuck, really? <laughs> <laughs> You're still in a 50 shot. <laughs> you old fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, is it rotten? I'm going to go no, but only but it's, I say 62. Like, it, this is my movie, and I'm not even going to try and ratchet the points on <laughs> right, this right. movie. It, the movie is interesting to me because. It is, it's just not like anything else I've watched, at least not in a couple of years, where it's just like, what do you want from me, movie? <laughs> no, yeah, they don't make these kinds of movies anymore, like that get like theatrical. I don't think movies. they made these kinds of movies before either. <laughs> they did not. And Actually, I, wanted- I, will, I will say there's probably, there's probably really only one movie that I've ever watched that really just sort of, has the same sort of d- not really quite sure what it is, but I think everything might actually be intentional. You guys ever seen the movie White River? No, no. Oh, right, White River no. Kid. Uh, it's like it's it's this it's it's Bob Hoskins and Antonio Banderas as these two con men that pick up like this murderer kid and his girlfriend. And then they take like this weird detour to, it's 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 bizarre. It's a bizarre movie. Maybe we'll watch it for Is It Rotten sometime because it's like I caught it on cable once and I'm just like, what is this movie? <laughs> huh. I'm interested. Ain't Tony Banderas, Bob Hoskins? Hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, the interesting cast. Interesting yeah. cast. I yeah. Do this. yeah. Dude, hold on. Tell me this: Is Bob Hoskins keeping his British accent or he's going to American? He's doing American. I'm wondering. Bob Hoskins uh, is a pretend priest traveling through the American countryside. Shit, I'm a pretend just, priest, I, like like a uh, like Michael Rosenbaum in that show. Fuck, I am is a priest. I am so Honestly, in- kinda. <laughs> I'm I'm very interested now. <laughs> I, yeah, I kind of. I it's, think we have to watch an, this. It's an right. interesting movie, and it might be my next pick because there's no way that's not rotten. <laughs> that, that, uh, it, it's not rated except for the audience, which is 17. Which is <laughs> yeah, that's right. I think I I think I looked it up. <laughs> All right, we, we definitely got to think about that because I'm oh, that's interesting. I'm like, oh, maybe I have to watch this later. Also, oh, kind of you. Uh, white it, it, the White River Kid. The White, white River, River Kid. Okay, I have to look this up. I'm I, I, I think I think I got confused because I think the trailer for it called it White River. You had me at Bob Hoskins as a pretend priest. I'm like I'm interested. Um, yeah. 
yeah, I really want to see this. I, I, man, it's either going to be a train wreck or it's going to be fun to watch. I, I don't it's like It's like it's weird because, like, they're, tra- they're traveling in an RV and, like, there's this, like, weird sort of... You sold me! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it looks yeah, it's, no it's, from what i've seen it looks interesting enough that i'm pro like even if we don't do it for an episode i'll keep it on my back burner of <laughs> yeah, yeah i want to that. watch this i was like oh de- de- i am definitely going to look this up when i get when i'm telling this like rv well, I'm about- oh yes i'm watching this it's it's, it's, a, it's a it's a strange movie and i think it was one of bob hoskins last performances i mean oh, no. No, I, I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm picturing like earlier bob hoskins like no no this is later Oh, this wow. Is, oh wow! This is 1999. <laughs> oh, oh no! Oh no! <laughs> yes! I this, this is post Mario. This oh, is very yes. post Mario. <laughs> yes, I want to watch this family now. I'm just imagining like like an 18 year old Antonio Banderas with like an older no. Bob Hoskins. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! This is this is post Zorro Antonio Banderas. Yeah, oh, like shit. I none of this. <laughs> Man. Like this, I need right. There's a lot of this where it's like where it's like the star power does not equal anything it's, else. Right. It's, it's I, not. I, it, it's so strange. I oh don't get God. it. I need one of these films. I need to get drunk and I want to watch it. This is gonna be that damn. This thing might I'll... just be a supplemental. Is it rotten outside yeah, yeah, of? Uh, yeah, yeah. Outside I, of the rotation. Next time, I'll tell you is what it, I feel about. Is it, it. real? <laughs> is it real? <laughs> is it real? Does it exist? <laughs> Does it exist? Because, like, I mean, I guess it because it doesn't really fit the formula because it's not rated on Rotten Tomatoes. Well, we did the corn dog. Man. We did the corn dog man. So. We did. The... I mean, you guys did the corn dog man. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough, fair enough. All right, so I guess oh, we're going to uh, <laughs> look at it up. Oh, I've I got to find out what this is. <laughs> no, I've already been doing that. Oh, yeah. Come on, man. Is Sorry to derail it. All right. But, uh, yeah. Let's, let's I, move on to the sequel pitches. All right, so I, I got to do the sequel pitch. Yeah. All right. My sequel pitch is a movie that came out two years earlier. It's called The White River Kid. <laughs> <laughs> That doesn't has work. nothing to do with the dentist. <laughs> Honestly, would that be that out of character? <laughs> no, it would, it would not. It would, it would not. <laughs> I will watch that. Um, so my sequel pitch will be um, <clears throat> I will have um, I will have Thomas Jane playing a playing a um, parapol- uh, playing a um, orthopedic doctor. Um, am I right? I got it right. The doctor said he feet, right? Or feet it. Boy, no, you're so. you're drowning on your own island here, boy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he's a doctor that that really helps you with your feet. I'm gonna put like think. Orthopedic. He's a foot doctor. He's a foot doctor. Foot doctor. <laughs> foot doctor. There we go. Foot doctor. Um, who is um uh, who's married to married to Courtney Cox? There we go. They're married. So at this time, Courtney Cox is. You know, they're having fun, they're doing everything, everything with their manager is going well until, you know, he's literally finding out that Courtney Cox is cheating on him with another man. This man who is she cheating on, who she's cheating on him with, will be David Archuleta. David, Ar- Der- David, not Archuleta. Uh, fuck. No, 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 no. It, the person who's cheating on him, cheating on him, I need to get me a star, does not. Extensive, not extensive. That's believable. Um, Liam Neeson, Nick Zeno. It's a callback. <laughs> yeah, I Nick Zeno. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you could get as many CW actors into a movie; they'll do it for peanuts. <laughs> I mean, do we really want to call them CW actors or they're acting CW? <laughs> Like players. Look, I was gonna say the the ho- the local homeless population the, behind the studio. But Nate okay. Haywood is <laughs> pro- homeless Nate population. Haywood is by default one of the better characters on on the legend legends now because she, they got rid of all the other ones. All right, here we go. Here we go. This I, I got the perfect one. She's cheating on him with Zach Efron. Boom. There we go. Zac Efron's not cheap. 
Zac Efron is definitely not cheap. Yeah, he's gonna be cheap in my movie, baby. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give him money. <laughs> well, actually, 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 Zac Efron does have a dad bod now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A real dad bod. Uh, Price points going down. Uh, yeah. He had uh, pasta for the first time in a decade and cried. All right. I don't need to do this money. anymore. All right. <laughs> Zach Efron is going to be she, she, she don't know what Zach Efron. So she, she yeah, finds... as, as, as if I didn't decide to also further date this <laughs> So did she know what You want to add a Onesler reference in there? See how far we can go. I'm definitely not referencing <laughs> no, no. the Onesler. No, no. The um, Onesler is ever present. <laughs> so she he he finds out he's cheating. So she finds Tom Shane found out she's cheating on him. Um cheating on him. And Zach Efron plots to actually goes in, he finds him, he confronts him, and then Zach Efron hits him upside the head, presumably presuming that he's dead because you know, they're they're not good doctors. You know, they're foot doctors. They don't know how to, you know, check vital signs. They think he's dead. Oh my God, he's dead. He's not breathing. Blah, 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 blah. So what they do is they bury the body alive. So they bury him alive. And he finds out that he's in the ground. He comes at the ground and he's pissed. Thomas Jane is pissed. So then he goes back and finds as Zach Efron and Courtney Cox are trying to find everything, find a new life because they think you know they're trying to find a new life, get away from the house before they actually find out that something happened. Because you know cops are, we're gonna say that cops are good in here. They'll find out that something happened eventually. So they're trying to get away from the country before sh- shit goes on. Before they start asking questions, people start asking questions. So they're trying to leave early. So what happens is he goes in there, he puts him into a trap house, he traps him in there, and he puts him through a maze and he finds a way to knock them both out in a situation in the end, and he buries them both in the ground, and it ends right there. Boom. What does that have to do with feet? I I think he's (laughs) trying to change the... it become Make it become Saw. No. Wrong. Not Saw. Buried Alive. Have you not watched the movie called Buried Alive? <laughs> no. No. Like, even I saw the cover to that and went, I don't care. Well, Buried Alive <laughs> is about a, guy, about a woman who cheats on him and then she kills her. Look, I have seen enough things where somebody was buried alive that I don't need to watch a movie based off the entire guy. Well, I just want to combine I Spit on Your Grave with Buried Alive and little, except without the rape stuff. I want somebody to kick the shit out of somebody. Somebody's going to kill those two and they're not like, dead and they could have come up with also, which which buried alive are smaller than one? Um, the first one, I think it was on USA for some odd reason. I watched it. Uh, I just remember. It. I thought this would work here because, you know, like reason. there's a 1990 movie. There's a 1997 movie. 1990, I think. So like, no, 1997's a USA one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one I watched. Weird. I, I watched it and it was interesting. He was got it. it. It was. She was sitting there shouting on the ground and she was di- as she buried that woman alive and then they buried up in number two. Number two suck. Don't watch it. Okay, Eric. Right. I so, tried. <laughs> all right. So my pitch for a sequel to this movie, you know, involves characters from this White movie. River. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, right. So movie starts off, you know, Opens up in the French countryside. Steve Martin, Helena Bottom Carter. You know they're they're having their nice life. You know Helena Bo- Helena Bottom Carter is pregnant, and then Steve Martin wakes up. He's sitting in the back of a police car. They caught him because <laughs> because Why not? of course they did. <laughs> Wrote a book. About it's it. like uh, it's like the entire ending of the previous movie was a hallucination. Mm. It's like, it's like they they were still able to, you know, collect, you know, hit, uh, collect Laura Dern on the whole, you know, murder of her murder of his brother thing. But Steve Martin, why did you swap still, out his teeth? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he he sw- <laughs> it's like he swapped out his teeth. He's he's in the back of the police car, toothless. Yeah, <laughs> and he's in pain. He's like, <laughs> 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 so 
<laughs> and he he gets on trial for you know the, evading the police you know that still a law that he broke <laughs> yeah he escaped, he escaped from police, police custody, custody. <laughs> <laughs> and so he he is he arrested prison. I'm watching this film. If he ends up in prison and he's and he starts becoming the big prison person, I'm watching this damn film. <laughs> he's in prison. Oh god, no. I'm, I'm watching this. I'm watching this. Okay, you got your bitch. He's in prison and they decide they to allow him to practice on the inmates <laughs> mm -hmm. because it would be cheaper. Oh. And so therein becomes this whole thing where different prison gangs try to use him to get his narcotics <laughs> and he be and he and he ultimately becomes this like unintentional drug kingpin of the prison you're breaking batting this aren't you, you are batting batting batting. you son of a bitch <laughs> like that, that is not the worst idea I've ever heard. It's, not, it's, it's not, like it's Andy not. Dufresne. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's a it's a little Breaking Bad, a lit a little uh, Shawshank Redemption. Right. I didn't kill him. I didn't. Did you? What you do? And Word a little a me. little fugitive as well. <laughs> so so I'm telling you, to Steve Martin go in there and literally go. They ask him, "Hey, um, so hey, what you got? What happened? Um, how you got in here? Or oh, you're fuck me? If he says that, I am. I'm watching this. And, and you know what? Maybe this movie, this sequel existing, prevents him from doing Cheaper by the Dozen. Yeah. Or at the very <laughs> least, Cheaper by the Dozen too. Which, by the way, has a four on Rotten Tomatoes. We're not doing that. It people. got that many? I'm surprised. <laughs> four people I actually, that I actually prefer Cheaper by the Dozen 2 over the original Cheaper by the Dozen, but... <laughs> I've never seen the sequel. I've never seen it. Have you ever seen the original? I have, yeah. Yeah, well, the original, well, like the well, original, the original, yeah, the, yeah. The, yeah, the original it, was decent. It's okay. The, All right. Well, che cheaper. Look, look, cheaper by the dozen too. It's like it is fully just a left turn from cheaper by the dozen. But once again, it's it's a it's a left turn that sometimes you gotta respect the choice <laughs> over the content. I will. <laughs> oh, yeah. I will I'll watch this. That. I feel it because I just won't see Martin go into prison and get in there and he said, you're my bitch now. You know, I, I want to see him get like super jacked. I want to like go uh, attack on cell block 99. <laughs> yeah. Like Vince Vaughn just beating people down in prison. So basically but, what you, what we're getting is Breaking Bad with the wire with, um, not the wire. Um, Oz. Oz. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 I want to see this. And here is the kicker. One of the one of the one of the presents that like a prison guard gives him is you know the classic Steve Martin arrow through the head thing? It's uh -huh. that but a it's that but a dentist tool and then he uses that to escape. Awesome. <laughs> I like this. I like nice. this. Also, um, can we add in what Laura Dern's character doing? Because I feel like she should be a Yeah, there's there's a full there's a full Laura Dern yes! plot. Yes, and she's literally like they just get it. Like I think that should be like an end. There's thing. there's a there's a Laura Dern Hel Helena Bottom Carter. They're locked in the same prison. Like uh, what are we going? Are we adding Orange is the New Black in here? What <laughs> little, it's a little Orange is the New Black. <laughs> oh, I think really the end, really it should be a, like like the end of credit scene where they just literally like you hear the prison prison bell like dang dang dang, and then you see. Laura Dern's character just like stabbing the shit out of somebody like, uh, uh, suck it, bitch, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> That's for the third oh, one, yeah. Also, yeah, also, yeah. also, the third one. also, the prison wardens played by Johnny Depp. Okay, nice. yeah, you got no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, which Johnny Depp? Which Johnny Depp? Yes. <laughs> there's only one. No, 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 there's no, three, no, there's no, different you don't, ones. no, Mac. You don't understand. It is, it is not Johnny, not really Johnny Depp doing a character. It's Johnny Depp acting like he did in twenty twenty one Jump Street. Yes, like, oh! like he's not over the top. He's just he looks like fucking Johnny Depp, and he's acting like a regular character. 
Because that is what this movie deserves. It's just a normal human person. Normal human Johnny Depp. I don't know what the fuck. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. It's it's exactly as off-putting as a sequel to this movie should be. No, no, no. I can see it right now. Somebody whispered too much. It's like, because if you really think about it, the only time Johnny Depp isn't playing like a wacky character that looks nothing like Johnny Depp. He don't give a fuck. when he was reprising his 21 Jump Street character in the 21 Jump Street movie. <laughs> but he was like in full makeup and everything. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> so it's like, it's like you, you do that. You just have him, you have him just be, just look like Johnny Depp. Like One mustache thing, and tag. long hair and all. Actually, I don't even know if he actually still looked if he looked like that in two thousand in the early two thousands. I don't know. Oh. Anyway, Eric, it's like, it I, just Eric. I want to see your damn film. Fuck my film. Yeah, I, I want to yeah. see that. Yeah. Fuck my film. Fuck dead, dead, yeah. Your Put film. Kevin Bacon in the prison as an oh, actor yes, researching. Yes, yes, yes. Movie. yes Kevin, 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 Kevin Bacon is a hundred percent also in this movie. Yes. <laughs> and then, um, and then Keith David got to be in here somehow. Like he got to be. Oh, well, to... this is going to lead to my pitch. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, it's, yes. It's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a full ten seasons of of Keith David <laughs> and Kevin Bacon. <laughs> yeah. He's doing it's, Castle. It's basically Hollywood <laughs> Homicide. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, was it? Wasn't there also a? It was there was like a a, a YouTube premium series that was a, effectively the same thing as well. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Has anyone watched a YouTube premium series? No. no other than Cobra Kai, no. no. <laughs> okay. I said uh, watch, but... not pirated. I watched that. I got a free <laughs> subscription to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Two times. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got my, my free. I used my free premium to watch Laser Team too. So I think you got the better deal. <laughs> so, Ooh, I saw uh, Laser Team. My one. alternate pitch. Good. My alternate pitch though would be just w- the movie that Kevin Bacon is working on in this oh, movie. Oh damn it! <laughs> just release that. <laughs> you know what? Solid pitch. Solid pitch, yeah. Solid Better pitch. than mine. I mean, I, I was lazy, so I don't give a fuck. I want to watch both of your films now. You had, like, plot details. I I said Hollywood yeah, yeah, Homicide. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was like, I want to watch this now. I'm like, damn it, why didn't I think of I'm, that? I'm also going to be completely honest. I didn't have a pitch going into this into this episode. <laughs> I, I just, I, I, just I just, like, I, full, I was... Full, I was formulating that over the course of the episode. I, I rarely like, do. I yeah. came up with it as soon as they came on screen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> honestly, honestly, that sometimes that just happens. You just, yeah. you know, sometimes you know your pitch before you finish the movie. Right. <laughs> All right, Zach, let's hear your pitch that you thought of ever since you watched the film the first time. <laughs> honestly, it actually... This actually came to me while rewatching it, so no. Oh, uh, all right. My idea is we completely scrap this as a movie and we do this as like a six episode miniseries idea. And we slow it down further. I like that. We go full on David Lynch season three slow <laughs> <laughs> on <laughs> purpose. <laughs> So the first like three episodes are just him doing dental work. (laughs) (laughs) And they get (laughs) for the dental work. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Like with with, like So because it's like, okay, if like because I was thinking a good a good thing for a good movie to look at other than this is Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid. Hmm. Because (laughs) it's uh, another Noir comedy, uh, Steve Martin, Carl Reiner. I, I directed it. it. I'm sorry. I, I didn't watch it. I'm sorry. I've never seen I, it. You really should. Very good. Okay. Um, but the idea is I want to lampoon what noir has become in the modern era with this. Like, let's lampoon Ozark. Let's make it so tediously insane. That like, the characters aren't, you're just kind of whole feel, feel. This feels like a 2010s movie in a lot of ways to me. 
Honestly, yeah. Like, right. so let's try. But, it, and... but it, it's a 2010 movie with weird, edgy, er, early to mid 2000s transitions. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I just want to know. Um, look, um, we we well, look. I know we cut out a little bit because my internet is unstable for a little bit, but I would like to add one pitch to it can we add sort of like an itchy the killers type of thing you know no damn it no 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 this this needs to be slow yeah but yeah. adding the, a, like, the whole first episode is just her making the the adventures exactly <laughs> like i like that's the thing i want to take it and go okay let's make it so artsy farty it's unwatchable <laughs> That you can't at the same stop. time you're like, what does it mean? Exactly. Like that's the entire thing that this movie is trying to, I think, do. Right. Is make you go, oh, it's is it brilliant? And you're like, I don't know. <laughs> and swap out though, like the early two thousands, like industrial music for like uh, jazz or something, like low, <laughs> like freeform jazz. <laughs> it's like drumming. Maybe. Or right. mumble rap. Let's go full. <laughs> Let's let's just no. make it as terrible as possible. No, the entire mama, soundtrack, mama, mama. the entire soundtrack is megalovania, but the beats are swapped. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, David Lynch has actually put out some uh, good dark wave stuff. So, okay. dark wave. Can we get a red room somehow. Somehow get a red room. I don't know why. I want to see it. No. This... <laughs> Like that's the thing. Anything you want, this will not ha- not only not have, it will leave gaping holes in the story. No, I'm saying like they're bleeding from the mouth and it's just a literal red room with a woman in a red shirt. No. Damn it. Like I said, let's uh, what I want is this movie to actively hate its audience. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, and I understand that. So, I really want to see Eric's film. No offense. Oh, yeah, I, I get it. You don't want to see this, and that's I, the idea. I, I mean, really Zach, Zach is making something that is purposefully unwatchable, <laughs> which is so in line with not only Zach, but also very in line with this movie. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> like, well, let's say I was watching this, I'm like, I'm thinking – Man, what is it? Why am I thinking getting flashbacks of Twin Peaks season three? And I'm like, that's why. <laughs> can we get somebody <laughs> also Laura Dern? Can we yeah. just get somebody flipping off the dag on camera then, Zach? Seeing there, you know, just shouting. No, 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 nothing obvious. Okay, like, we, like instead of that, like literally have it like go inside of a hand and blood vessels and stuff for no fucking reason. Can we just get Filthy Frank and Filthy Frank in this pink suit? I I'm not convinced he wasn't in the original. <laughs> <laughs> and any, anyway, in in Zach's pitch, there is an entire flashback episode that's just just the just the brother almost sexually assaulting Helena Bottom Carter. <laughs> yeah, but like not quite doing it, but it's just like it's Damn just like it, full just... implied. But for an no entire actual... six, for an entire full sixty minutes, it's nothing but that. Exactly. And also, like As one episode is just about Kevin Bacon and Keith David. <laughs> it's, it's like just, it's, like, it's just my movie. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's just a, it's just a full 60, 60 minutes of that doesn't advance the plot at all, and you get it after the first two minutes. You mm-hmm. understand it, but it just keeps going for another fifty eight. <laughs> like I want, I want people to scratch their own eyes out <laughs> watching this miniseries. That's the idea here. Wow. Oh, okay. That it's like it's so, so unwatchable. So by the not time make it to you the end. get to the idea at the end, which is a bad ending, you're like, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, like I want. It to, still keeps the awful. This is like one of these films where you're just it's like, like you're going directly to Rotten Tomatoes and say this film sucks. Right. Or how this, about this? In the last episode, it becomes like banned or snatch and you suddenly start getting choices <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's like you you suddenly get choices based off look, of if about, you actually watched look fully look, watched the the if episodes da- if i can get the video game maker of- david cage to direct <laughs> this then maybe <laughs> Hold on, can we get, <laughs> can we get a little Keep David Cage away from these 
<laughs> properties. <laughs> can we get you mean my, all I, properties? <laughs> yes. Can we get um? Can we get a disclaimer? Do you want to continue watching this? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> like, no are you sure? honestly, 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 the episode probably could have ended with the discussion of White River, <laughs> the, the Wyver kid, but. Uh, but we'd also miss out on my pitch, so maybe not. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. All right, so guys, that was a movie. That was a good movie, is it? But yeah, it was all right. Um, it was different, which is what's more important to me at this point. Yeah, okay, life. okay, cool. It was different. to be honest. Like, it's, as we all know that you wanted Sonic to look the original way, and we I did, Dan. And Damn you did. Man. Yeah, yep, and you didn't get it. Give and, us the Sonic cut, the Sonic cut. Yeah. I I still hold by my fact that there should be a Sonic the Hedgehog the movie the game and there's an epi- there's a level inside a funhouse and inside the funhouse mirror is the original Sonic model. <laughs> I should have won that point. No, you didn't. <laughs> I, I, I was not there, so I have no bearing on this. No, th- this was this was the this was like a couple seasons ago. I actually was think it? you were there. Yes, yes, yeah. you were there. Was I drunk? Maybe. No, okay. you were. But fighting. that's also just your default state. Yeah, I think you were fighting too. But anyway. Yeah. Um, yes. Yes. <laughs> I think. Were... I think I was up against you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One. And you were like. So I was... Like the like those are not mutually exclusive. That was your shadow man <laughs> bullshit. Anyway, <laughs> all right, <laughs> all right. Uh, so anyway, um, all right, guys, that was the episode. Um, so guys, I guess you know now it is my pick. Woo! Why would it be your pick? Because it goes back around. Sorry. No, but we've been doing polls, sir. No, 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 we we did we did we did the polls to reset the order because. All right, I just want to keep in mind that Halloween is coming up here. Right. Yes. Right. Okay, Zach. You'll get. Don't worry. We're not gonna forget Halloween, and we're not gonna fuck it up. So you're gonna get your Halloween movie if you fuck. Come on. You might. It might I, mean, fa- I mean, if it. Goes- I mean, we definitely owe you for last year because we totally dropped the ball on that one. <laughs> yeah, we did, and now we know you want to do a Halloween film. I mean, we'll let we'll let um, but we'll pay a stipulation. Whoever gets the date on Hall- on October, you have to pick a Halloween movie or a horror themed movie. Okay, is that fair? All right, so that makes Zach happy. Okay. Does yes, because okay. I would. All Look, right, but I don't see enough blood in my films. I, I start to get. We did the Mouth of Madness. Now come on, now. I think that movie's did... not very bloody. Yeah, but it was a horror film. Did I stutter about the blood? Or <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I mean, I'm I'm glad the math is not going to work out that it's gonna it would be my pick because I would just I would just choose Ah Zombies because I always <laughs> wanted to cover that movie. All right, so um, that's my pick. So I don't want to let Zach pick it because it will be too obvious. And Scott is not next. Um, Eric, you're going to be next up. So I'm going to give you the chance. I have two movies that I'm having on my mind, and I'm going to let you choose one. One of them is the Outcast classic, Idlewild, which is a musical film. Or Blank Man, starring David Allen Greer. And Damon Wayans. Blank man. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> We're doing blank man, guys. Uh, yes. All right, cool. Uh, I'm sorry. We're doing blank man. We're doing blank man, yeah! Uh, I, I do not blame you at all. <laughs> that was the correct choice. <laughs> uh, it was a hard choice. Blood of Wild is not bad. It's not a bad film. It's pretty decent. Idle of the Wild is a better soundtrack than it is a movie. I really just want to pick Iowa out just to piss you the fuck off. I, hey, am I wrong about that? No, you're wrong. It's a good movie. <laughs> no, I said it's a better soundtrack than the film. Oh, it's a it's a better soundtrack and film. I like the I like the That's film. That's it. That doesn't make sense, Mac. I'm saying better than. <laughs> I love oh, the wait. <laughs> oh shoot. I, I uh, am you know, gonna I be the, the one in October. So I guess, I guess the, the pick after that's gonna be Ah Zombies. All right. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. You're not the pick because of me. It's me. No, it would be. No, it was September. Scott was, Scott was, oh, no, you're next. Yeah. 
October. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're October. Yeah. So I, I, all right. So our October movie is going to be Oz Zombies. AKA Wasting Away. AKA, AKA Wasting Away. Okay, cool. So, I love it when it has multiple titles, honestly. Oh, yeah. No, that, that's like extra bad quality, which is perfect. All right. Well, you heard to hear people that, were doing. Hey, if, if it wouldn't have been this, it would have been my question. My question was you'd have to pick a uh, pick a Roger Corman directed film. So whatever. Right. Right. I mean, I would have probably picked uh, what's a Capone for a horror movie. You guys seen Capone, <laughs> aka Fonzo? Okay, no, that sounds familiar. It's it's from this year. Wow, this is Josh Trank's Al Capone movie starring Tom Hardy. <laughs> oh God, why? Oh, why? It's amazing. <laughs> can can we just make sure Tom Hardy never ever plays like a criminal again? He's really bad at it. No, man, he's he's our generation's Nick Cage. <laughs> okay. Um, he can play all the the mobsters that he wants. Are you kind of talking? Did you see Legendary? I did not. But all right, guys. I, mean, I think it's time to end this episode. <laughs> all right, guys. So next time we are doing Blank Man, but before we Blank do it, before Blank Man. All right. So Eric, what you got to plug? All right. As always, you could find me on Twitter at Bunk Bunker. You can find me here on the game fixers ch- channel networks and stuff doing this and other things and for the first time i finally have something else to plug oh. you can now find me in uh live uh sunday mornings at 9 a.m eastern uh as a as a player character in friend of the show kim hanley's campaign on uh twitch.tv slash role society okay <laughs> My first time playing D and D live stream to the world. <laughs> okay, that sounds fascinating. Sounds fascinating. I'm definitely gonna watch this. Uh, <laughs> that's like hat, hat. That's like this is this is uh, this is being filmed the day before my second session. <laughs> oh shit! It's gonna be awesome to watch this. Well, then again, me and you're nothing about D and D, so we'll just yeah, we're gonna lay back and just like ha ha ha. I have no idea. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? Scott, what you got to pull up me? Uh, not much. You can find me on here. Uh, you know, we got our, uh, our other show, Film Talk. Yeah, we just, and... we just got done filming. I think we filmed Daredevil. Which, yes. Daredevil. Which, we, which we both agree that they didn't get Kingpin wrong. No, he was great. Michael yeah. Clark Duncan's great Kingpin. Yeah, yeah. Wrestling movie's kind of a mixed bag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, we're not doing Electra Das Vita. Um, yeah, we're, we're, yeah, so you, yeah, you can find me here. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Jubaka Defense, and yeah, that's about it. All right, Zach. Uh, I honestly don't have anything. Uh, I will probably be randomly streaming. Uh, I will be continuing to do uh, killer cuts with sick tapes with Brian. Mostly just stuff on here, honestly. Yeah, um, yeah. That show that um, the show that's number two. That's not number one. You know. Look, at least we know our genres. Fuck you. Um, we're number one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so, um, uh, so guys, if you want to, is there anything else you got to pull up? Uh, don't watch Legend 2015. It's a terrible movie. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, guys, if you want to come watch the number one show, which is Dope albums, which is me and Trill. You can go watch that show because that show is awesome. We just got, if you're probably watching this, um, we just got done filming our episode on, um, we got done filming our episode on the top five, top five alternative bar albums. But as we know, Bows, we're going to tell you right now that some of those albums are not exactly alternative. That's just our preference. We just went all out for every different thing. So people are going to preference. We're going to be a person that's going to preference and everything but anyway our next episode we're going to give you a sneak peek because we're different unlike other shows we're going to be we're very very different we're probably going to be doing you know what i can go ahead and share it we're going to be doing our top five tv intros top five tv intro music so boom top that zach um uh, anyway uh we're going to be doing that um and um the next episode we're so um we got that coming up um also the 
also we got Gamer Grudge. Go watch that. Let's make it better. Um, Anime Yurami, which is back. Um, we're gonna be. We this should be up. Um, and um, so much. Um, we got so much more. So much more people. Um, hope to see you watching that. And um, GF1 podcast. Go watch the GF1 podcast, please. GF1, GF15, um, GF1 Sports, because we got to talk about sports. Fuck you, Zach, because sports is going to be relevant. Okay. Uh, so there we go. Um, that's all I have to say, people. So just keep watching. And then next time when we come back, people, we will be talking about. <laughs> Blank Man. Uh, yeah, I love Blank Man. I don't think anyone hates that movie. I, I, no, I don't think nobody hates it, but it is rotten. So I love it. The movie's just strange. It's it it has a, a reek of early in living color. It has yeah. it. it. I feel like yeah, we'll talk about that later. Um, all right, guys, we'll see you next time. Bye.